Well, hello everyone. Today I'm here with Mark Fournier, our Vice President of Auxiliary Services, a key member of our operations team to talk about our work over the summer to implement our layered public health framework. Mark has been instrumental in leading this work, especially with testing, and I'm grateful to him for all that he has done over this period to help keep our community safe. So Mark, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. Uh, let, let's begin, and Mark, for those who may not know you yet, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your role at Georgetown, and maybe a little bit about your journey that brought you to Georgetown and to your work in higher education more broadly? Certainly, yeah. So Mark Fournier, I'm Vice President of Auxiliary Business Services here at Georgetown. Thrilled to be here. Um, let's see, my higher education experience started uh, many moons ago, back in 1987 when I went to culinary school. I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship for my second two years, and I actually taught students going through their practical work in the hotel that the university owns. So uh, it was hands-on experience and I enjoyed it immensely. Um, it afforded me so many opportunities. When I graduated, I didn't want to smell like fish and garlic for the rest of my life. So I started working in the hotel industry and I became an expert over the course of about 20 years in turnarounds and, and, and making uh, hotel operations profitable. And that eventually led me to George Mason University of all places. I worked on auxiliary services for about five years. I started as an executive director. I worked my way up to associate vice president in the end. I had all the auxiliary enterprises. I oversaw real estate. I helped with campus master planning, uh, the development of an innovation district on the main campus, and then some of the work related to Amazon down in Arlington. Um, I was recruited to Georgetown about a year and a half ago. And during my time there, I've been here, I've been uh, working to remodel the various contracted services to make them a little bit more equitable to the university and developing systems and process to make our work more effective and efficient. So I'm certainly enjoying being part of the Georgetown team and community and working with so many brilliant people. We're, we're lucky to have you. Uh, and then in March, all of our worlds changed and you took on some extra responsibility. Uh, you've been immersed in helping us develop our layered public health framework with special attention on our testing protocols. Can you talk about what it's been like to respond in this moment to the kinds of challenges that we, we now face? Yeah, it's, it's uh, been an amazing and rewarding experience uh, to be able to continue my lifelong journey of, of uh, education. Um, you know, I, I, I received two master's degrees in, my la in the last 10 years of my life. So I feel like I've been in higher ed, you know, in the last 10 years more than I was my, <laughs> my whole, you know, younger career. Um, so the experience has just been really fulfilling. Uh, that said, I've never worked so hard on anything for so long in my life, really. Uh, morning, noon, night, late at night, and I've been surrounded by a team of people that have been doing the very same thing. Um, regarding, you know, important conversations and, and considerations, you know, as you know, back in January, we began having conversations internally about the impacts of the virus on our workforce and our community. We were modeling worst case scenarios with our, with our team members and partners, bookstore, dining services and the like. And we were focusing on keeping our workforce safe as this virus continued to take hold of the, of the world. Um, these conversations continued through March. And as you know, we wound down the campus. It was an extraordinary task to move everybody out, consolidate students to apartments so that they would have a kitchen and a facility to cook out of. Um, then in late May, early June, we really focused on the development of this health safety campus plan with my focus being on the screening testing and tracing, isolation and quarantine planning. We had so many conversations with so many people, privacy experts and the Office of General Counsel related to access control, biometric screening, tracking applications, even the application that we currently use. We considered how data would be held and used and how we would balance privacy expectations with our community and keeping them safe. Uh, we had dialogue with Todd Olson and the student affairs and res life team on how to care for and communicate with students who continue to live on campus and for those that would be returning to campus. You know, we consider the hierarchy of need, of course, defined by Maslow with conversations and focus on not only the biological needs, right, food, water, shelter, but also the behavioral health needs. Um, this thing is taking a heck of a toll on so many people. Um, 
we spoke with Eric Smallson and the communications team, never ending messages about operational details and what's to come. Uh, Rebecca Katz and, and Vince Winkler Prince and Jesse Goodman and that eventually led to a health advisory working group where we aligned on the broad health and safety framework. And those things included the daily cell pad testation that you see today, the testing frequency, uh, the development of a contact tracing team. Um, that turned into a COVID-19 operations team, which is led by Rudy Mishuri, as you know. Um, we, had, uh, we talked about isolation and quarantine. We tried to model what the future would look like as it related to those two things. We thought maybe 5% of the inventory would be allocated to that. And if we did that, you know, what would we do for wraparound care? How many students, how long would they be in there? What about shared bathrooms? What about shared common areas and the like? Um, we talked about pre-arrival and upon arrival testing, thermal imaging, and that was problematic for so many reasons. Random testing, what types of testing, how frequently. We talked more broadly with folks like yourself and Jeff Chattis and Joe Ferrara and and Chris Culley and, you know, what about the behavioral expectations? Should we do a restricted campus perimeter? Should we allow a more porous campus and have building access control? How do we control move-in? What are the faculty and staff and student expectations related to testing and attestation and additional protections like PPE and plexiglass and the like? We considered all kinds of partners. It was so amazing to see so many people rally around Georgetown they talked to their friends and their colleagues and they sent one person after another to us. And Judd uh, Nicholson and Ben Elsner and the UIS shop helped me sort of vet all of these folks um, as quickly as possible. And of course, as you know, we landed on one medical to be our provider, our provider uh, to help us facilitate the testing. And then as June progressed, our testing and tracking logistics planning frame, framework really took form. Um, seems like a long time ago. But if you think about the enormity of what was accomplished from then until now, in such a short time, in less than really 90 days, we developed the framework, we operationalized the plan, and we've conducted over 6,000 COVID PCR tests to date. And we have the capacity today, we started yesterday, uh, to do over 1,200 tests per day using a multi multitude of testing modalities. So quite yeah. fast big work and a lot accomplished in a short period of time. Our community owes you a great, great deal for everything that you've enabled us to be able to do during this period. We're all grateful to you. Well, it's certainly been a team effort. Thank you, Bill. Let me, let me ask you about some of the adjustments that you've had to make over these past few months in terms of your work. Yeah, yeah. So first and foremost, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate to have a great team that works for me in the auxiliary business services area. You know, we have a small team, just four people. But uh, when we did the move out together, um, and they, we all continued our typical work until the wind down in, in, in late March. Uh, my team, Jennifer, David, Samantha, and Elizabeth, really took care of everything that they could to free up my time so that I could focus on this, on this work. And they've continued to run that operation sort of in my you know, lingering absence. Um, I'm really, really very proud of them. Uh, secondly, my adjustments relate to the balance between you know, a consensus-driven organization um, and the speed of, by which we really needed to take action. Contemplative in action is key, but the contemplation had to be quick and focused on the right things at the right time. Uh, personally, I had to balance the needs of my family who've been really, really so supportive. I'm lucky to have my wife, Anna, and my daughter, Paulina, to help me think through things and keep me moving each day. And my personal mantra comes from, you know, it's a book called The Oz Principle. Um, I don't know if you've ever read it, but when times are tough, you know, I ask myself, what else can I do to rise above my circumstances and achieve the results? And while I stand by that principle, it can be a little annoying to people sometimes. So I've tried hard to balance my urgency and my expectations with how people are used to getting their work done. So yeah. due to my short tenure at Georgetown, uh, my biggest adjustment has been to find the people that have a high degree of functional knowledge to help support the decisions that need to be made quickly. And the adjustments, you know, continue. They're constant in each day. It's kind of like building an airplane as you're flying it to a destination that keeps moving. Um, and the science, you know, just keeps changing. The behavior changes and the needs change. And during all that, the entire team has been just relentless, pivoting, aligning, and getting tight on things. Um, from a food and beverage and hotel perspective, you think of the work that had to be done there, sure. right? The Hoya Hospitality Team led by Katie Davis, and so flexible and innovative, we developed 
and a quarantine meals, wraparound services for isolation, utilizing the hotel to support MedStar and their work, and modifying retail operations every few weeks while evolving the program to be the best that it could be. Yeah. So even a simple thing like moving in students tomorrow, right? And we did some a couple of weeks ago. We modeled that four or five times to get it right and perfect. The scripts developed for each station, and making sure the experience was as welcoming as possible. So, well, What has it been like to engage with our public health colleagues? That yeah. They offer guidance and recommendations for us as we try to think through our framework. Um, was this a new experience for you working with public health colleagues? And how, how, have you, how have you learned to navigate your way through this? Yeah, they're all so brilliant. You know, I feel, you know, I have two master's degree. I joke sometimes, like, could I turn those in to get a PhD? But it's really not the same. <laughs> These folks are brilliant in their field. But, you know, the really great thing about Georgetown is everybody's so passionate about the institution, right? So there's this overwhelming desire to help and really, um, you know, accept me as sort of an outsider in a world that I'm not used to. But I think we collaborated and have really done some good work together. Um, sort of a symbiotic relationship. You know, it's an interdependent model where each area has some reliance on, on the other and we all need to work together to keep our community safe. So operations, health policy, privacy, public health guidance, we all must work collectively. To be honest, the changing landscape has kept us on our toes, but thankfully we do have experts like Rebecca and Jesse and the whole health advisory team. We listened to and we adapted to CDC guidance. As you know, it changed ever so often, but specifically related to quarantine and isolation. Uh, we took that guidance and we modeled all kinds of scenarios there. You know, understanding that one positive case could lead to five to 10 other close contacts that maybe need some care. So we've been thoughtful in, in that respect too. From an epidemiological perspective, you know, we modeled our congregate spaces and focused on behavioral expectations, social distancing, safety measures, and the communication needed to appropriately manage these congregate settings. We've had great feedback from our epidemiologist, John Kramer, and, and just, just one thoughtful dialogue after another. We talked through the viral testing, the mechanics of that. I actually have a flip chart on my wall. I look at it constantly, antigen test, PCR <laughs> test, rapid versus antigen, sensitivity versus specificity. What does that mean? How do each of these modalities change based on the collection of a sample? Um, so it's just been a fascinating experience to learn from such brilliant people and then, you know, keep myself uh, immersed in, in the science to do the best job that we possibly can for Georgetown. Thank you. Thank you. As, you, as you know, our public health campaign is organized around the idea, every Hoya, everywhere. As you think about your work, can you talk about what it means for us to uphold our individual and our collective responsibilities for public health? Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're all, when you think of every Hoya everywhere and everybody everywhere, you know, we're all going through this thing together and it's everybody all over the world. Um, it's a common tie that binds us all and whether we like it or not, and if we're diligent and we work together, you know, I think our unity might prevail. Um, I think it's hard, right, especially these days, to find the good in people and help educate those that are confused and, and keep vigilant, you know. But together, I think every Hoya, everywhere, we'll beat this virus and we'll be back to business as usual if we, if we, if we stay vigilant in that respect. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as I said a moment ago, we're very lucky that you made the, made the move to join us here at Georgetown. We're very fortunate that you're part of our, of our leadership team. And I just want to thank you for everything that you're enabling us to do as a university. In closing, is there one thought you'd like to leave with our community as we begin this fall semester? Yeah, yeah. You know, thank you for that. And I must say, it's just an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, you know, I've worked a long, long time to get to where I am today and, and I'm proud of the work that I've done and my family's very, very proud of me and I owe that to the experience that you've allowed me to have here at Georgetown, so thank you. Um, my wife, Anna, you know, just my part in common, my wife, Anna, was diagnosed with a very rare autoimmune disease last year um, and she's scared like so many other people are scared. Um, her doctor told her not to leave the house and not to come in contact with any of those people that are coming in contact with others. And she's afraid and she doesn't know what to do each day, but she gets up every morning and 
she thinks about the work that we're doing at Georgetown and she gives me a cup of coffee and she pushes me out the door. And when I come home and I'm tired and complaining, she feeds me and <laughs> gets me going again. So, you know, I, I feel safe enough coming to work each day because of the layered approach and how thoughtful we've been. And I would, you know, say to everybody out there, look, we've been more diligent than many, many people in our space, right? We're taking a very proactive approach on this thing. And, and if anybody had reason not to go, you know, it'd be me. But I think it's important. I think we've done good work. And if we stay united collectively um, and be, be diligent, you know, we'll get through this together. And, and again, we'll turn this ship around. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us in this conversation. And I look forward to being with all of you again in our next video. Take care of yourselves and take care of everyone around you for every Hoya, everywhere.